You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. I'm Joe Iconis. And I'm Jennifer Ashley Tepper. And on today's episode, we are talking about the nurse and the addict. If you ever wanted to have a dance party to an absolutely psychotic song alone in your room, this track by Taylor Trench will do it. It's inspired by the film and book Misery by Stephen King and is about addiction and is about writing and is about dependency on chemicals and human beings and fandom. And it's about uh, three and a half minutes too long. (laughs) (laughs) It could have been even longer as I learned from the podcast and you will too. Enjoy. The Nurse and the Addict, this was one of my favorite songs that we recorded. Like in the recording session, I feel like I was like doing a mosh pit of my own in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those songs that is, it, it's one of the more rare songs on the album for sure. Um, you know, it's a tune that I wrote the first time for a Halloween show at the Beachman uh, because it is inspired by the Stephen King novel and subsequent film and later stage play, Misery. Yes. Um, I love this song so much. I've only been able to get through half of Misery, not because it isn't great, but because it scares me. (laughs) And I feel like I owe it to my boyfriend who made me read the book and also to this song, which is one of my favorite Joy Connors songs, to like read it. And thank you for not making the song so that I can't sit through it. It's a terrifying story. Yeah, it is a terrifying story. Um, Yeah, and the, you know, the story, I've always loved Misery a lot Um, and The story itself, I just love that Stephen King wrote it kind of about, um, or not kind of, like he, and he's talked about this, he wrote it sort of about his drug addiction. Um, That's kind of like the central metaphor of of misery. And I really loved how that idea of like, um, you know, whatever it is, your, you know, your muse or your, or your drive or whatever is this thing that is both allowing you to work at a certain level and and wrecking you. Mm-hmm. I loved that. I also love like all the stuff in Misery sort of about like fandom, you know, <laughs> there really is, it, it is kind of like, it's a, I feel like it's, you know, spiritually connected to like other sort of like fandom forward things that I love, like King of Comedy and, and other stuff like, you know, sort of things that are about stalkers, people who are sort of like obsessed with, with with the art and the artists, you know, <laughs> art and the artists who make them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. we should have done a pop up performance of this song when Misery was running on Broadway, like right outside the Broadhurst. I just know. Taylor Trench screaming the musical <laughs> version of the show. Yeah, screaming at Larry Metcalf. Um, so yeah, and so it's um, it's sort of you know all of that kind of bubbled up and and um, and created this this tune. Which, what year was this? I'm trying to place it. Did it, it premiered on Halloween? It premiered on Halloween, but I remember when I first premiered it, it wasn't like one of those ones that was an immediate hit. You know, it wasn't like, it didn't feel fully cooked right out of the gate. And uh, and so I did it and I, um, I, I, I feel like it might've been like 2013, 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I didn't do it for a little bit. And then we revisited it again at a musical theater factory concert where Jeremy Moore sang it, mm-hmm. uh, which was good. Um, but again, it like never, it, the song itself, like there's always something about it that didn't quite click for me. And so that that's why I feel like this is one of the ones that really came together in the studio, mm-hmm. you know, and sort of like the idea that I had about how to orchestrate it and sort of like the the kind of maximalist treatment of it mm-hmm. and the typewriters and there, you know there's just so much happening on the track I think that that actually served it it's yeah. like one of the rare songs where I think it's like kind of better not stripped down you know I think it's more it's more itself it feels more um it feels more or authentically what it's you know it feels more authentically itself when all of that other garbage is on the track. Yeah, that's so interesting. I've never really thought about that before in reference to your songs. Like I've mm-hmm. thought about it a lot in terms of musicals. Like some shows you could see a reading of at Open Jar, and mm-hmm. it would be just as good or better if it was on Bro- than if it was on Broadway. And then some shows need 
other stuff. Like, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. Jonathan Larson with Tick, Tick, Boom. Like, those songs would have sounded great without a full band, but they mm-hmm. needed a full band so that the music could become what it became. Mm-hmm. Are there other songs of yours that, like, The Nurse in the Attic, do you feel like, oh, with full production, like, it's just, it requires it theatrically? Like, I almost want to say that Ammonia is one only because it's such a different song, whether it's, like, just a person at the piano or others, but mm-hmm. it's good both ways. Yeah. But that's one that actually feels like two different things. Yeah, it's funny. It's like, it's, a, you know, I think for some of them, it's it's more like the production adds another layer, you know, or it's like a lot of the times it's songs that are very sort of genre forward. So like something like, um, like Sympathy for the Killer or Out of Sight, Out of Mind, you know, the way that those songs are written, the way that they're constructed, they, they have a very sort of, you know, a golden age, you know, kind of 1940s or 20s even, uh, chord progression and melody and 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 you know lyrical style and so it's sort of baked into the writing of the song but there's just something about hearing those songs with you know period appropriate orchestration that really sort of like you know drives it home mm-hmm. um but i think you know a lot of my songs it's, it's usually the opposite like it's usually like with, it, you can take away everything and the song works just as well Mm -hmm. in a totally stripped down way because that's just the way I write. I write, you know, for a song to be able to be played on the piano and have it have it work. Um, But yeah, there's just something about Nurse in the Attic. And I think also because this song is so much about excess, you know, it's Mm -hmm. so much about um, about someone kind of drowning in this sort of excess of their own making that it's like it's there's there's just more clarity to it when it's this wall of sound in your face totally explosion i also think and and i'll go back to nurse in the attic that honey is probably one of them in a way like i've oh, heard yeah, yeah. honey 100 like bring down the house when you like have played it on the piano at sardis and it's just like folks singing in you but it becomes this like beatles concert when it's done in concert yeah. with like the full band with the backup singers mm-hmm. with you know like whoever's singing it out of microphone yeah. you know killing it um yeah that's a that's one so Nurse in the Attic, Mm -hmm. we have to talk about the great Taylor Trench. And I remember so specifically when you like came home from Barrington, from doing a concert at Barrington, and you were like, oh my God, I met Taylor. It was Taylor Trench and Anel Nathan. Like you got to know them at the same time. (laughs) I I don't think you were, you weren't directly working with them. You can correct me, but like they were in maybe the Bill Cabaret and you were doing it and you were like these two people, like I have to work with them. I have to work with them. Obviously you knew who they were already, but it was just like a big moment. Yeah, no, truly. Yeah, I, I lived with them in a house. I lived with them. them. I lived with them before I worked with them, (laughs) which is like the most 70s thing I've ever said. (laughs) Um, uh, So yeah, so uh, uh, Taylor Trench and the great Anne L. Nathan uh, were in this concert at Barrington Stage Company, which has been an artistic home for me for a very long time. And uh, it's this concert that Bill Finn uh, did um, called, what's the name of it? It's, it's songs, songs, you should, by, ri- songs You Should Know by Ridiculously Talented Composers yeah, and Lyricists. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so there's sort of a core group of actors. And then I hosted it with him mm-hmm. this year. So they asked me to come and host this concert with Bill Finn. We sat at a table. It was very strange, but very <laughs> lovely. And so in this concert was, you know, Anne, who I had been a fan of, who I knew, um, and Taylor, who I'd never seen before. And I was so obsessed mm-hmm. with both of them as performers and as people <laughs> um, but the you know but taylor it was sort of like it was so shocking because i had just never seen him and so yeah. i was like oh my god who is this guy um, where did he come from the answer is florida and <laughs> and he there's just nobody like him yeah nobody like him i didn't realize you had never seen him before because as you said of florida my introduction to taylor trench was a frantic call from my sister when she was at high school thespians being like i just saw this boy win and he's going to be in new york he's going to be a huge star you have to watch out for him his name is taylor trench which i always have to tell taylor <laughs> <laughs> and of course, like I grew up worshiping Anna Nathan, especially from her Tony performance from Thoroughly Modern Millie. So two very good choices yeah. to grow into yeah. Barrington. And you know, and Taylor also, and this this actually is a great sort of you know case for. I talk a lot about how I don't like auditions, and I wish there was a way to just kind of meet people and and get a sense of them as humans, and then that would be the thing that that would allow us to decide, oh, well, this person would be good for this role, this person would be good for this role. Um, but Taylor, in addition to his performance being so great, as a human being, I just found him so uh, so peculiar and, <laughs> and charismatic 
And, um, and interesting that that was so much a part of my initial, you know, being like sort of swept off my feet by him. Uh, Cause he's just such an unusual guy and so funny. He's one of the like 10 people who like truly, truly, truly can make me laugh. Yeah. I just think he's hilarious. He's so funny. Yeah. Um, which is why the first thing that I guess I really did with him was the Christmas show mm -hmm. and, and uh, Mr. Chestnut. Um, he originated the role yeah. in Mr. Chestnut. Yeah, he originated the role. <laughs> that, that, that role is that role because and of Taylor Tramp. you did several other things with him since then. And yeah, and Taylor was the, Taylor played Jeremy in the, the first proper workshop of Be More Chill. It was Taylor and uh, George and Lauren played Christine in that reading. Are you talking about the one like at the WME office before? Um... No, that was the, that was sort of a bootleg reading, but this was like our first oh, 29 right. with, yeah, with so people I singing and yeah, yeah, in first... the Davenport offices. I remember, yeah. wow, Taylor long was time Jeremy ago. In that one. I do remember that, yeah. yeah. And then we did a big workshop of black suits right. in 2013, I believe, and Taylor was Chris in mm -hmm. that, and he was very brilliant. Um, yeah, I love him a lot. He's, he's good in everything. I've yeah. never seen him be bad. And it, this performance on the album is genuinely funny, just like everything Taylor does. That it's, yeah. it's so, like I laugh when I listen to it. I'm like, I've heard it a bunch of times. Like, yeah. it's so funny. Well, that's the other thing too, that like, I knew that, I knew that I wanted it to be really in your face, really confrontational. I knew that the whole idea was that we were going to have this kind of sonic landscape that was kind of overwhelming. And the song is so aggressive. Uh, that I thought it, it would be cool to have somebody like Taylor who is, who is so naturally funny and so sort of goofy at the center of it. And I think it, it makes it sort of resonate even more. And when, when I sing the song, it kind of like, it's, um, it sort of starts in an aggressive place and just kind of gets more and more aggressive and there's like real anger there. But I think in Taylor's performance, it, the anger sort of creeps in and mm -hmm. it's, and it's actually, it becomes less, less anger and more sort of fear, you yeah. know, in a way that I think is really, really helpful to the song. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the end, that whole end round, um, there's, there's, um, there's so many songs on the album that end uh, with a, a coda, you know, which is like a, a section of a song that you haven't heard before. I love a coda uh, in general. And, um, and I, I, I end a lot of songs with um, a severe amount of repetition because I'm also very obsessed with repetition. And um, I think there's lots of, uh, yeah, lots of exciting uh, dramatic and thematic benefits uh, to rep repetition. But um, in this song, in Nurse in the Addict, I knew from the top that I wanted it to be this like, this like merry-go-round that never stops, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I think, um, you know, obviously or not obviously, it's you know sort of speaking to addiction and this idea of like one more time, one more time. Like, I'm just going to do this this thing one more time, um, and it's every time is you know every time is one more time. Um, so I always imagine that like you know I I would love if I was if I if I had limitless funds and I was a very famous person, I would love to release like a single version of of Nurse in the Attic that was on like a on a vinyl and the end. Uh, the end coda would just go on for 20 minutes or like it would just go on for however much is left on that side of vinyl. Yeah. You know, because I think that's the idea that it just keeps going and going endlessly. Um, for folks listening at home, like I feel like I want to sing along to the part that the audience sings along to in the concert <laughs> when I listen to it on the album. So feel free to do that in your homes. But um, yeah, it is one of those that you just like can't help it. Yeah. Um, yeah I also yeah. didn't realize till the way you were just describing it, it's very much like that Hal Prince thing of like you're watching Cabaret and you start to get into how great the song Tomorrow Belongs to Me is. And mm -hmm. you realize like, oh my God, it's a Nazi song. You know, it's yeah. that yeah. where I didn't think of it that way. But of course, it's yeah. like about addiction. Yeah. I mean, and that's you know that's 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 it and it's and it's like um the you know taylor's performance at the end we did it you know we did it so many times and he had a lot of ideas and we just sort of let him you know go and uh and he's just amazing it was so thrilling to watch him just you know sort of lose his mind and and then just like scream like yeah. that was what he was and i remember that that you know his sort of like final scream during the last time i remember he was like um uh, he was like, oh, I just have like this idea about um, maybe I can just like scream or something. Uh, can I, I'll, maybe I'll just like do it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously just do it. And then he just like literally screamed. And it's like one of my favorite things on the album, That's you know, so when it's funny. like when an actor says like, I thought maybe I'd scream it. I just thought he would sort of like give it some more vocal oomph, but it's mm -hmm. just a, a wordless scream. And I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly what, 
that's the you know the natural progression of what this is. It's really so good. It really is just like that Halloween playlist from the album keeps going on in my head as we get to more yeah. and more Halloween numbers. There's a lot of them. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you looking forward to the moment when like a school does it and they split it into two parts and it's the nurse in the attic or something? <laughs> I feel like we could see it. Yes, it's inevitable. But you know, the title, I, I actually, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad that you just said the title of it because I remember now that the original title of it was, um, was Annie Wilkes, which is the name of uh, the name of the the woman who is who is uh, Paul Sheldon's uh, fan and captor in Misery, um, and even though I have I have so many songs that are character names and so many songs where the name never appears in the song, it felt it felt incorrect because mm -hmm. it's because um, it's not her, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then and then it was the nurse and the writer for a while. Um, but yeah, the nurse in the attic just felt like the, it, you know, it felt like the, if that's how we're boiling this down, um, that's what it should be. I really can't think of a lot of your songs that have had title changes, but that's true. Mm -hmm. Like that does, even though yeah. I like shuddered when I heard Annie Wilkes, because that's how much misery did a number on me. But <laughs> you're right. It, it doesn't feel right for the song. It's, yeah, because it's just yeah. not, it's not that. It doesn't yeah. like, it, it doesn't, yeah, the song doesn't hang with that. Yeah. You know? The nurse in the attic. Hey. Thanks so much for listening or watching to my podcast. Uh, do me a favor and go to wherever you just listen to or watch this thing and subscribe or like or give us a great rating or review and then head to bpn.fm slash album to find out even more information about this podcast, more ways to watch, more ways to listen and check out my album, Album. Thanks so much for hanging out. Album Podcast is executive produced by Liz Armstrong, produced by Dory Berenstein, Alan Seals, Kim Garris, and the rest of the team at the Broadway Podcast Network. Be sure to visit bpn.fm slash album for both audio and video versions of this podcast and to listen to album. Album.